Hello, this is Dan Pro. Welcome to my rigging channel. This is part three of my advanced deformation rigging series. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to set up a two bone deformation system. And what that two bone deformation system is going to solve is you probably know whenever you have a bone that needs to rotate on multiple axes, especially if it's all three of those axes, it's nearly impossible to get your weight paint to look good on all three of those axes. So a good example of this situation is the thigh bone. We need to rotate it forward and back on the X axis. It also needs to go in the opposite direction on the local Z axis and on the local Y axis it needs to look good as well. Now the local Y axis rotation is actually pretty important because that determines the direction of the knee and the shin. The shin only rotates on a single axis. There's no side to side or twisting of the knee. Now if you have twisting or side to side action you're probably going to need to see a surgeon and then new need to do about a year's worth of physical therapy so we don't want that and we also want our y-axis rotation deformation to look better than this now this particular rig is simulating a single bone deforming the whole of the uh, thigh right now and the y rotation actually looks pretty horrible because it's just affecting the mesh at the top of the thigh far too much and if i was to reduce the effects of that weight paint on that thigh. I could probably fix it for the y-axis, but then that would destroy the working of the x and the z rotations. So in order to fix that, by using two deformation bones along the length instead of a single de deformation bone along the length of that area, we'll be able to fix this situation. So I'm going to turn on my deformation bone layer. We can see I have a deformation bone for the top and the bottom of the thigh. I need to turn off the constraint, because like I mentioned, it, this is just simulating a single bone. Now when I rotate the thigh controller, notice that only the lower bone is going to rotate. So it's going to change the direction of the knee properly, but it's not going to affect the mesh up here as much. When I rotate on the X and Z rotations, basically these two deformation bones are going to stay in line and act as a single bone. It's only when I rotate the control on the y-axis that that lower bone will rotate on the y-axis. The top one will stay in line and it won't rotate. And it's this difference in weight painting. If we go into weight paint mode, we can see this. I'll select that lower bone. You see the influence here is stronger at the knee and then it's slowly getting less and less. So it's barely affecting the mesh up at the top. And the reverse is true with the top one. We have the strongest um, amount of influence up here and then it's slowly getting less and less down towards the knee. And it's this transition between these two bones, if I select the correct ones here so you can see it, it's going to give us that nice even y-axis rotation. Basically what we've done is divorced the y-axis rotation from up here and just put it in the center of these two bones. In addition to helping the y-axis rotations, having two deformation bones instead of one deformation bone is going to give us additional uh, opportunities for squash and stretch controls so we can squash and stretch the top of the thigh different than the bottom of the thigh. Again, more options, more options are better. So this is actually pretty simple to set up. So let's get to our rig from the last tutorial. Now I went ahead and added some my anti-scissoring and anti-intersection rigs to the top. I'll come back to that. Now as I mentioned before, I'm mainly concentrating on the hips, thighs, knees, and the shin area, but since this two bone deformation system is also used up here and it's going to be uh, slightly different as far as parenting and the constraints, I am going to cover the upper arm for this. So let's start with the leg first, tab in edit mode. With the intermediate thigh bone, I'm going to do shift D to create a duplicate, then W to get my specials and subdivide. That will create two duplicated bones of equal distance. This top bone I will name def thigh dot zero zero one. I'll hover over this name with control C and then I'll select the next bone control V to paste it. That will sequentially number it to dot zero zero two. Now def thigh dot zero zero two can be parented directly to the intermediate thigh bone. Control P keep offset. Now the explanation of the parent for this upper bone is going to take a little bit extra here. If you remember back to the first tutorial of the series, we've added a socket rig bone. We had the MCH leg socket and then the MCH leg parent. So basically the 
the MCH wedge parent is parented to the root bone and it is using a constraint, a copy of location constraint, so it's only copying the location values from MCH leg socket. MCH leg socket, of course, being parented directly to the hip bone. So we're only transferring the location values to our intermediate thigh bone. Now I need a bone that's going to copy both the location from MCH leg socket and the rotation. And this was world space to world space for both of these. So I added a new bone, added both of these constraints targeting the MCH leg socket bone, and that is going to be the parent of our top deformation bone. So I named it MCH thigh.001, this is going to be the parent of def thigh.001. Turn on the other layers here. Go back into edit mode so we can finish our parenting. So as I mentioned, def thigh.001 needs to be parented to MCH thigh.001. Control P, keep offset. And now the parenting is set up. We go into pose mode and start rotating the main controller. Notice that only that second bone is following along. So it's basically going to stick at the end there and follow along directly. That is exactly what I want. However, I'll turn off that layer here with the mechanism bones. I do want the deformation bone to stay in line with that. Now, because it's not parented to this bone, it has a different parent, it's not currently staying in line, but we can make it stay in line and force it to stay in line with a damp track constraint. I will just have this bone target the def thigh.002. So I'll select that as the target. Shift select def thigh.001. That will get the damp track constraint and the default values of the, the damp track with the y axis pointing at the head of that bone, def thigh.002, is fine. Now that is the very basic setup. Now, as I mentioned, we will be adding the squash and stretch controls. I will do this in the next tutorial. But first, before I do that, I want to explain that there is a little bit of a bug for this. And it's basically just a limit uh, of where we're going to find the limit of the damp track constraint itself. Under normal circumstances, for normal walks and runs, when you're swinging your legs back and forth, this two bone deformation system is going to work fine. However, if you get above about the 90 degree mark and then you add some side to side rotation, I want you to watch this bone right here as I roll this back and forth. It is going to roll a little bit. Now that's not a huge problem because usually you don't have your legs kicked up that high and usually you're not doing side to side rolling as well when you do that. But if that ever happens, when we add the squash and stretch controls, eventually we're going to be able to have manual control over that deformation bone so that rolling will be able to manually just put it back into place and I also do have a automated way to stabilize that too now it's only going to work well for the leg again I'll cover that in the next tutorial now back to the parenting I want to show you a quick demonstration of why we need it to this top bone to inherit the location and the rotation and not just the location so for the left bone over here, which is on the right side of the screen, I've parented this to the socket rig that has the location and rotation constraint. In this one, I parented to the socket bone that is only copying the location of the hip. If I start rotating the hip, we'll just notice the difference here. And I'm gonna do this severely just so you can see it. Notice how that is kind of um, twisting. So we need to have that deformation bone stay relative to our hip bone while still not inheriting the scale values. So that is why we are using the socket rig. So that is why we use that setup. And it's also going to be that extra um, MCH thigh.001 is going to be the parent of one of our tweak bones later on too. So it's going to serve dual purposes. I'm back to the original or our rig here. I usually don't find that having a two bone deformation shift system for the shin is necessary. For this particular character, I decided to use a single deformation bone. And right now, it is the shin bone down here that's upside down. That is part of my anti intersection or scissoring rig. For the upper bones, though, in the arms, that is a different situation. For the upper arm, because it's just like the thigh, it needs to rotate on all three axes and the Y rotation is going to determine the direction of the elbow. Now the forearm, just like the shin, also only rotates on a single axis. So it is dependent on the upper arm for its direction. 
However, the action of the hand means that we need to have two bones in our forearm. So it's not directly because it's rotation, it's the action of the hand. Now if you just move your hand on the X and the Z, so basically just if you just put your hand out right now and move it up and down and then side to side, notice what happens to your wrist. It basically just stays in line. There's not too much other than some flexing of your muscles in the uh, forearm. However, if you rotate your hand along the Y axis, the whole wrist, notice that the whole wrist is going to go with it. So that is why we're going to need a two bone deformation system for that. Since it's slightly different, again, that's why I'm going to cover it. So I'm going to select the intermediate forearm and the intermediate upper arm. Shift D to create duplicates, W, and subdivide. Now I'm not going to go through the parenting and the constraints for this upper because it is identical to the um, thigh bone. This lower deformation bone just needs to be parented to the intermediate upper. We need to parent this to a soccer rig that is only going to inherit the location and the rotation from the shoulder and then we need to have this damp track to the secondary bone there so again it's identical now on the forearm it's a little bit different now if you're using my anti-scissoring rig you'll want to parent both of these new deformation bones to that an MCH forearm bone that is the one if I go to pose mode that has the um, transformation constraint that's rolling it out away from the joint there to give it a little bit of separation. Now if you don't want to use that rig, it's no problem. You can just parent these two new deformation bones directly to the intermediate forearm bone instead. I will be using the scissoring rig, control P, keep offset, so parenting it to MCH forearm. Next I'm just going to go to pose mode and hide this bone because it's kind of distracting and in my way. Next I need to have the second deformation bone copy the rotation of the hand. Now because the hand is not aligned properly, if I were just to add a copy rotation with world space, let me just go ahead and do that. Shift Control C, Abby, copy rotation. Notice that that bone kind of pulls out of place. If I just turn that constraint on and off, you can see it shift. Now we don't typically want to have any shifting from our default pose. Now the smart thing for me to do would be to just realign my hand bone correctly, but there are some situations that you're going to find where that's just not possible. Let me get rid of this constraint. And so I want to show you a solution to that. Whenever you need to use a world space to world space um, constraint and the bone is not aligned, they're not aligned identically, you can use this little trick. I'm going to select the deformation bone, shift D to make a duplicate, and then it's going to give me a bone that is identically aligned with the deformation bones here. I will scale it down a little bit, name it MCH wrist. I'm going to select the point at the wrist, shift S, cursor to selected, and then select the smaller MCH wrist bone, shift S, selection to cursor. So I will parent MCH wrist to the hand bone now that they're in the correct position with keep offset. Now I have a bone that's going to follow the hand that is in the correct orientation. Now I can have this forearm bone copy the world space of this MCH wrist bone. So if you ever find that situation, that's a trick that you can use and it's not going to screw up your default pose. Now when I rotate the hand, it is copying the rotation like I want. However, I don't want it flopping out in the wind like this. I want it to stay in line. And we can do this with another damp track constraint. So I will select the intermediate th hand bone as the target. Add that constraint to the second deformation bone for the forearm. Damp track. And now it will stay in line. Now this layering of constraints is very common and we're going to use this a lot in the next tutorial but I do want to show you if I rotate this hand a little bit the order of constraints is very important so if we were to damp track first and then copy the rotation this would not work we need to copy the rotation first and then damp track to point it at the hand so again the order of these constraints is pretty important and we're going to use this ordering principle quite a bit in the next tutorial. Let me just clear this out. Now we have a situation where when we rotate our hand side to side, 
on the X and Z or up and down on the Z Z axis. It's not going to affect the forearm, but when we rotate our hand along the Y axis, that forearm will follow. And then with weight paint between these two bones, we will get the deformation of the forearm to look correct. So that is the two bone deformation system, the very basics of it, however. Again, we're going to add these squash and stretch controls in the next tutorial. So I hope these tips help. Until next time, good luck.